Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Steak and White Bean Pizza. All right, today we're gonna be firing up the Clementi wood-fired oven to cook our white bean and steak pizza. We're gonna start by cooking off the steaks in the pizza oven, then we're gonna make up some dough. We're gonna make a white bean hummus. It's gonna all come together for a really fantastic pizza. We're making our standard pizza dough for our pizza today, which starts off with 325 grams of warm water at about 105 degrees. And we'll add to that five grams of dry active yeast. I'm just gonna stir that in. So this just needs to sit for about five or 10 minutes until it starts to foam on top. And that warm water will activate the yeast and get it working. Today we'll be cooking on the Clementi wood-fired oven, and I really love this oven for cooking pizzas and other stuff. As you'll see, we're gonna cook some steaks in here today as well. But I really love it because it's got that great stone base, which gets nice and hot and gives you what, what you think of as a wood-fired pizza oven, but it's made of metal, so it heats up really fast. I mean, by the time your first logs are burning down into coals, about half an hour, you're ready to cook on it. Speaking of which, we're gonna go ahead and get our fire going right here in the dead center of the deck. All right, so we're gonna slide these bigger logs right in here on the bottom. I'm gonna place a couple of fire starters to help get this thing going. Probably put some back here as well. Then we're just gonna stack our next pieces of wood at a 90 degree angle. And we'll do that one more time. We use a torch to get our fire starters going. So we're gonna add the water and yeast to the bowl of a stand mixer. And we'll add to that 500 grams of double lot pizza flour. And the fourth and final ingredient, some smoked salt. Let's get this dough hook on here. get this going on kind of a medium low speed it should take about 60 seconds for the ball of dough to start to come together and then from there we're gonna mix it for an additional seven minutes all right we're seven minutes in now dough's looking nice and smooth we've given it some time for it to work that gluten which is what's going to make this flour or sorry, this dough really strong and what allows us to stretch it. But for now, we need to let it rest for a while and let it proof until it's doubled in size. So you can take a bowl or a plastic container like this one, make sure you get some fat in it, whether it's oil, uh, duck fat's what I'm using today. Just drop that down in there, place the lid or plastic wrap on top. And it'd be really easy to see in a container like this because we're at about one quart of dough and we want to watch it double come up to about two quarts. Here you can see where the dough has now doubled in size. How long that takes just depends on what the temperature is in the room that you're in. What we're going to do is turn this out onto a floured surface and divide it into two dough balls. All right, so we're just going to split this right down the middle and this will give us two balls of pizza dough. Now I'm going to leave this top a little bit tacky because that's going to help as we start to form our dough ball for it to stick together. And what you can see I'm doing is I'm just pushing that dough toward the center as I rotate it until the top stretches and is nice, clean, smooth stretch on the top. So again, we're just kind of tucking toward the center and rotating. And there you've got your dough ball. We'll transfer these into a dish to once again rest and proof a little bit longer. But really what we're looking for now is probably just about half an hour or so for this to get light and airy again and for that gluten to relax now that we've worked it into a dough ball so that we can stretch this out into our pizza dough.
Next, we're gonna be making our white bean puree, which is kind of like a hummus, and it starts by roasting off some garlic. So I'm gonna get an eight inch skillet here over medium low heat. We're gonna add about one head of garlic worth of cloves that have been peeled. And then we're gonna cover that with some extra virgin olive oil. Probably need about a cup to get that done. So now this is just going to kind of simmer away. You don't want to get it too hot because you don't want to brown these off. But this is something you can just kind of leave on the stove top for about 20 minutes while it cooks. Now this is what you're going to end up with. These are just lightly browned. If you press on them, they're soft all the way through. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I've strained those off. We have here some of that oil. We're going to use about a quarter cup of it in the puree itself. Now in addition to our garlic and our garlic oil, we're gonna need some cannellini beans, some fresh thyme, and some lemon juice, as well as a couple of seasonings. I'm gonna go ahead and get these stripped. You're gonna need about two tablespoons of lemon juice. We're gonna use this small food processor, probably fill it to the gills. So that's one can of cannellini beans. Add our garlic. The lemon juice. The fresh thyme. And then I want to put just a little bit of heat on this. So I'm going to add some of the Cattleman's Grill 8 second ride. You can see there's some chili flakes in there. We're going to need a little bit of salt, so we'll use some of our smoked hickory salt. And then finally that garlic infused olive oil. just blitz it until it's smooth. That's a really nice consistency. See how it tastes. Oh, that's great. I love that lemon juice in there and especially the fresh thyme. Just a touch of back end heat on the tongue. Perfect. You see how the fire is cooked down and we've got some coals to work with. So we're just going to kind of gather everything in a pile here and then we're going to slide it off to the side. We've got a grate that'll contain our fire, which is awesome. Just shove that over to the side. I'll throw another log on. And then we'll clean up the deck. Now right here in the center, that stone is super hot which is great. We're gonna throw our cast iron skillet in that we're cooking our steaks in and let it preheat. Slide our skillet in to preheat, throw the door on. That cast iron won't need a long time to preheat, but while it is preheating, we're gonna just get our steak all seasoned up and ready to go. So we're cooking a ribeye steak today. This is boneless, uh, although that's not necessarily significant. But the ribeye part is kind of important because we're going to be cooking this twice essentially. Once to get it almost all the way cooked through, then we'll chop it up, dice it up, put it on a pizza and throw it back in the pizza oven. So we want something with lots of fat like we have in a ribeye steak that keeps lots of moisture in the meat. For the seasoning, we're using Cattleman's Grill Tuscan steak seasoning, lots of salt in this, a little bit of pepper flakes you can see there, and then some great Italian herbs and aromas going on. We can go pretty liberal with the seasoning because once this gets onto the pizza, you've got a lot of meat to work with and a lot of other flavors going on. So just kind of let that set up for a few minutes until the rub is nicely attached to the meat. All right, we gave the skillet about five, 10 minutes to preheat. We're gonna add a little bit of oil now. Now this is just grapeseed oil. 
Uh, you don't want to use something like olive oil for this because it'll just start smoking immediately. The grapeseed oil has a much higher smoke point. You can hear that sizzle. Immediately going to start getting a good sear. We'll throw that back in the deck. All right, I'm going to slide this door into place so that we can create the proper airflow from the fire out the stack and make sure that it stays nice and hot in there. All right, it's been about five minutes that this has been in here now. Let's see what kind of color we have going on the bottom side. Pretty good. Nice sear around the edges there. Try and get the same thing going on the other side. We'll slide that right back into place. Fire's dying down a little bit, so we're gonna add another log just to maintain that flame. And any flame we can get coming over the top of this will add a little extra color to the top of the steak. Wow, look at that. It's like cooking in its own fat up there on the top. Now we're gonna look for a finishing internal temperature of about 125 on this ribeye. That's right where we're at right now, so we can pull this thing out of here. I'm gonna give that steak a few minutes to rest before we dice it up. In the meantime, we can prepare the rest of the toppings for the pizza. So really simple here, we're just gonna go thin sliced red onion. You don't wanna go too thick on this part when you're cooking in a wood fired oven like we are because this pizza is not gonna take very long to cook and you don't want these to be totally raw when they come off of the deck oven. We've also got some fresh tomato. I'm not actually gonna put this on the pizza for the cook, but this will add a nice bit of freshness to the pizza when we toss it on there after the cook. So beyond the tomatoes and onions, we've got some pesto here. This is just store-bought because I don't want this to be a 45 minute video today. <laughs> and then we've got some pickled jalapenos. Uh, these are the hot variety. This is gonna add some acid to the pizza. We're just gonna go for kind of like bite-sized pieces. So when you bite into your slice of pizza, it's not everything you get. These little bits with that dark char on them, that's gonna add so much flavor. And speaking of flavor, all of that juice and all of that fond in there, tons of flavor on that. So let's incorporate it back into that stuff so we get every little bit of that on our pizza. I moved the dough into the refrigerator so it would slow down a little bit because that's right where we want it. It's puffed up nicely, it's relaxed, time to stretch it out. Get a little flour to work with here, kind of press it out, kind of form a little bit of a border around the edges. You can roll this out with a pin if that's what you're comfortable with, you can stretch it by hand. Which is what we're going to do today. Got a thin spot right here we're gonna try and fix. There we go. And then we wanna land this thing on a pizza peel to transfer it over to the oven. And we're gonna get a little semolina flour down on our peel. So this semolina is just a little bit more coarse than a regular flour, which helps it move off the peel pretty easy. The first thing we're gonna do is get down a little bit of pesto. We're not gonna go very heavy with this. Just enough to kind of cover the surface. That looks good. And then we're gonna come in with our white bean hummus. And we're just gonna do dollops of this all around the pizza. And as all of this gets going in the oven, these are kind of going to melt out and spread a little bit. And you're creating these layers of flavor between the pesto and the hummus. Next, we're going to come in with our steak. We're going to keep this kind of low under some of the ingredients, especially the cheese, to try and prevent it from drying out when it's in the oven. But as you can see, it's coated in liquid and fat, so I'm not too worried about that. Next, we have our red onions. 
place these a little closer to the heat so that they soften up a bit. And we'll top that with some provolone cheese, just kind of torn into pieces here. This is gonna brown really nicely. And we've got our pickled jalapenos. I just love the way that the green pops. Great bit of color there on top. And we'll finish it off with a bit more of that Cattleman's Tuscan. So here at the far right side of the oven, we're sitting at about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can bet that in the center, it's even 600 or more. So this is gonna be a quick cook on this pizza. I'm gonna throw one more log on here so we can get some flame going across the top of the dome. And then we'll slide our pizza off right in the center. I'm only going to give this thing about 30 or 45 seconds before I open that door and see how things are looking. We're going to have to rotate this pizza to get it browned evenly because right next to that fire is a lot of heat. All right, I'll pull it out so you guys can see before we turn it. But look at that browning there at the edge. Perfect. We've got bubbles forming. We're going to spin this around and put it right back where it was. About a quarter turn. throw the door back on. More good color. We'll do another rotation. So probably either in thirds or fourths. We're getting pretty close on the bottom as well. So we've got one more spin in us and this is just about done. Looking pretty good. See we're getting some browning on top. But we can kind of finish that off by lifting this up to the dome and getting some intense heat on the top for a short period of time. and you can hear it sizzling away immediately. Just a few more seconds. Beautiful. Let's pull it off. All right guys, we've got enough ingredients to do two pizzas, but I'm too impatient to wait until after the second pizza, so let's slice it up and taste it. Man, this smells good. Check that out. Dough's fully cooked all the way through, but it's still got some nice tenderness to it. You can see how our white bean hummus has just kind of melted into everything. Ooh, my mouth is salivating. Mmm. So good. Crazy, like, Steakhouse flavors, definitely not your typical pizza. Man, all the flavors were just right. It's tangy from that jalapeno on top. Like, you definitely get that right off of there and that saltiness. I can even see some of that rub, uh, that Cattleman's Tuscan seasoning, fantastic. The smokiness of the steak, it's got a little bit of crisp on it, contrasted by the creaminess of our hummus sauce. It's all working really well. Guys, I feel like an idiot. I forgot to put the tomato on top of the pizza before I ate it. I was just so excited and it was really good. Don't forget the tomatoes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. And don't forget the tomatoes. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.